Delene Ray is in a minority as a woman at the head of one of Australia's oldest beef export ventures. Women are very involved in agriculture, uh, certainly up to middle management, but as captains of industry go, there are really very few women. Delene is as homegrown as the organic grass-fed beef she sells into the world's top export markets. AB cattle are sourced from family farmers who live right in the centre of Australia and collectively they own 7 million hectares of certified organic land. It's actually huge. Uh, to put it into perspective, it's around 40% the size of Guangdong province in China. It's a semi-arid part of Australia in the Simpson Desert, but it also has many channels that flood annually and it's a beautiful environment to raise cattle. There's never been any intensive agriculture. You've never seen tractors or fertilisers or anything like that in that part of the world. And it means cattle graze in a natural environment on native herbs and grasses, which we believe instills a really nice flavour in our beef. And it's certainly appreciated by consumers around the world. Deline's family moved to a cattle station in the late 1800s. Her grandfather later buying their first farm. So I grew up in a really small town in central Australia called Birdsville. It had a population of 100 and it's still only got a population of 100. 25 years ago, a group of farmers, including Delene's father, set up a business called Obi Beef, now known as Obi Organic. The first market that they exported to was Japan. And it was many years later before they started selling their product to consumers here in Australia and also in other export markets like the USA. Deline is a fifth generation beef farmer who took over managing OB Organic in 2011, although the transition to the top job was unexpected. I was one of six children, so there were three boys and three girls in our family, and I had a twin brother called Dion. He died tragically in a helicopter accident when we were 20 years old, and that changed my life. He was the one who was destined to take over the family business. Despite her upbringing, which defined clear roles for men and women, Delene soon found herself at board meetings and travelling the world to meet buyers. Well, I've been in the business for over a decade and it's certainly changed a lot in that time. I've noticed a, a lot more interest in organic beef and, and specifically from customers in the USA, but also in places like the Middle East. While Delene would like to see more women on boards, it's not the only change she is navigating this year. Australia's beef exports have slumped during COVID after international travel restrictions drastically cut global freight capacity and sent costs soaring. The stats speak for themselves. Australia's beef exports compared to last year are down 24%. Hey, great to see you. Hi, Delene. How are you going? With half of Obi's exports at risk, Deline turned to Australia's international trade promotion and investment agency, Austrade, which is helping exporters adapt to a tougher trading environment in the wake of the pandemic. Tell me about the US, what's happening there at the moment? Thanks to Austrade's $72 million agribusiness expansion initiative, Obi has been able to overcome COVID obstacles to maintain its regular clients and cultivate new ones. We're so excited to be launching Obi Organic Beef here in Saudi Arabia. Against the odds, Obi has also been able to develop a new market for its beef with the help of Austrade's Middle East team. In Saudi Arabia, we've worked with our agency partners, Department of Agriculture and Department of Foreign Affairs to improve our market conditions in terms of getting a longer shelf life for our beef into the market. We exported product to the market pre-COVID, but it was limited to a 70-day shelf life. And last year, we were so fortunate when our diplomats were able to negotiate an extension, and our product now uh, is able to receive a 120-day shelf life. And what that means is that we can now send our product by sea freight. The real challenge for us is getting it out of our coal stores in Australia, onto ships or aeroplanes, and into customers' fridges around the world. Australia has been able to support OB to be able to get on those flights at a cost-effective rate. We export beef into places like Hong Kong and Thailand a couple of times a month, and with the support of Australia's International Freight Assistance Mechanism, it's, it has meant that we've been able to maintain those markets. 
as COVID continues to disrupt supply chains. Delene and her team will continue to disrupt their own ways of working to get their beef to customers all around the globe. A new UK-Australia free trade agreement will also progressively eliminate tariffs on Aussie beef over the next decade, opening up a significant new market. For Delene, it's all about ensuring the long-term future for OB farmers and the channel country that she loves. My job and the job of our board and, and agribusiness boards around Australia is to set ourselves up for success over the next decade. And what we're hearing from customers in export markets around the world is that they want businesses like ours to focus on sustainability. It's also about preserving a family legacy for future generations. That group of 30 producers that came together in Thargaminda in the late 1990s, they had a dream. They recognised that the cattle that grazed in their region were special their region was special and that there was an appetite for their product that was unrecognised and I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to continue that legacy.